This is another Poets at War General Report. And here's your general, Joshua David Ling. Good luck. What is good, everybody? It is your general back again on another General's Report. What's up, everybody? I already said that. I know, I know, I know. I always say that. And uh, one of the ways I know I always say that is because I went and uh, recorded... Well, I say recorded... Uh, wrote a general's report and tried it with Descript. And I know what went wrong, so to speak. Uh, and I have more training to do on my Descript overdub voice to make it sound more normal, more authentic. It actually sounds amazing. I'm actually going to put a little bit in here for you to hear. It's your general, Joshua David Ling, coming at you with a quick general's report. I just got off a smoke break call with my friend Alex from The Brood, and we were talking about a lot of things, including metaphysics. Uh, it is amazing how close it is to my own voice. It really is. But there's something still missing. And it's something that I'm going to put in there. There's actually a functions for taking your voice and giving it inflection, uh, highlighting certain portions and giving it an excited feeling, an angry feeling, etc., etc. But you have to train those. You have to train the computer. Um, this got me thinking. Uh, when I recorded this, uh, well, wrote this episode, um, I had a little bit of stuff that I wanted to talk about. And that sort of ballooned out as I started to think, do I really want to put this out? Um, do I really want to go this route? And the answer is yes, eventually. Um, I want to go this route of overdub eventually because it will free me up, and that's a good thing. But it's going to take more than I thought to build this structure. A lot of people really have a hard time with this. They immediately chuck a tool out of the window saying, oh, it doesn't work. And they move on to the next thing, right? A lot of people have been talking to me, including Alex recently, and we'll get into this discussion too, how online, social media, does it really do anything? Are we just kind of spinning our wheels in the big tech world? Um, are we we actually making any progress in anything? And I think the answer is clear when you actually look at things on a macro scale. Yes, uh, they can't control everything. Even with AI, <laughs> they can't control everything. Um, what they can control is crazy and staggering, but stories are subterfuge to the machine. One of the things that I really wanted to talk about is, you know, when you're building a little forum somewhere out on the internet, it's not that it's not physical. It does exist in a physical realm, but it's a li little Lego studio that our voices and our, our, our pictures end up, you know, being propped up in, in a way that we can experience it on another end, right? Just like the telephone, just like anything of that nature, it's not perfect at all but neither is meeting in a public park right when you meet in a public park for for a talk all kinds of things can happen yes it's physical and it's actually a step better than that but it's not meeting in your own building your own office to have a meeting and a discussion now church is a whole other thing god demands that we are fully engaged with each other in a physical presence right but a lot of people want to take this principle and they want to move it out to another dimension, right? But the fact, that I, the thing that I really want to get home to you guys is build what God wants you to build, where he wants you to build it. Should we be making cathedrals? Yes. Should we be making little like I was saying, Silicon Lego forums that exist on a server somewhere that we can meet up through virtually. Yes. We need all of these things because meeting is inherently valuable. Fellowship is inherently valuable however you get it. I've known people who have come to Christ because of the internet because of the connections that are able to be established with one another. I know people personally who I've led to Christ who have experienced this exact same thing. Now, that doesn't mean everyone needs to be building those. Some people are really, really good 
at building these little silicon cathedrals, right? These little miniature silicon cathedrals. I have found that I'm better on a small scale. A small scale that's a wide net, but a small scale nonetheless. Now, I'm working on getting better in a larger scale. I'm working on uh, doing things in local areas and local levels. But, you know, it takes time. All of this, like my overdub, takes time and effort. And we only have a finite amount of time and effort to be putting into anything. And it would be wrong for you who is convinced that they don't need to be making their little silicone cathedrals to make a silicone cathedral, right? It would also be wrong for you if you're not convinced by your conscience, by the Holy Spirit, to build a physical cathedral or a homestead or whatever the case may be. You have resources that God has given you and you need to put them where you believe is best for the kingdom. And you need to be in the word teaching you what to do with the skills that God has given you. This whole one size fits all thing is absolutely bonkers. I, 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 I know the church really did this. A lot of pastors said, if you're not going door to door, blah, 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 you're not helping Jesus. Yeah, you are. You're helping Jesus by changing diapers or building a house or making little forums where people who feel really, really lonely and isolated can get together. Right? And encouraging them to go to their neighbors. This is the gospel. It spreads through any and every medium. The gospel is absolutely and completely formatless. It can go into any format. And it should go into every format. If there is a language on this earth where I cannot speak the gospel of Christ, let it be damned. Let it be damned. Anyway, I wanted to make sure that I actually read this point to you guys from my written general's report. I'm just going to read through this real quick. This is connected to this whole thing, and I'm going to connect it further as I finish it and tie everything back together. But here we go. I just got off a smoke break call with my friend Alex from The Brood, and we were talking about a lot of things, including metaphysics, politics, and much more. Much more. <laughs> but we ended on a really cool note that I wanted to bring up. We met in the Brood's Discord voice chat, the same place where we meet for the Broodcast every month. He said we were, uh, as we were parting, thanks for hosting this, and I said, I'm so happy to share crop. This brought up the idea I've thought about many times before. You see, many people who don't have a place of their own, they rent places in person and online and aren't able to host dinner parties or the like for the purpose of fellowship and networking. And honestly, Casey and I both have had a hard time being as hospitable as we want. But doing something as simple as branding your own Discord channel or Facebook Messenger or forum or having a picnic in your local park or anything like this is a good and godly use of your resources. We don't all have mansions to throw lavish parties, but some of the best parties I've ever been to were when I was DJing six, six-year-old birthday parties in someone's basement. They'd push the chairs back and create a dance floor and boom, instant fellowship and fun. We serve a God who uses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. This includes your pitiful little chat thread. This includes your one-bedroom apartment. Some of the most faithful churches in the U.S. are without a building of their own, not to mention all of the faithful underground churches all over the world. Be faithful with little, and he will bless you with much. Host a party or chat soon as you uh, host a party or chat as soon as you can. It might be the spark that turns the tide of the culture war. This is such an important principle, and I want you guys to know, God can use and does use whatever you can build. Don't get hung up on the blueprints. Make the thing. Make it. Make it and use it for his glory. This has been Poets at War, the General's Report. Remember, be your family's bar. Do not turn to the right or to the left, and the Lord will be with you 
wherever you go. We'll see you next time in the trenches on Poets at War.